Welcome to my virtual security operation center using only open source tools. And today I am using OpenVPN, which is an open source uh, product to connect to my security operation center. And I'm now able to use solutions listed here like Wazoo, The Hive, or OpenSense as a firewall or other things like Velociraptor for DFIR. So I'm going to show you how I did it. The first thing to do is always planning and planning for network and infrastructure. And in our example, uh, since we are going to be using OpenSense to uh, have a public IP so that we, we can forward ports to our teapot honeypot, we will need at least two IPs, one for Proxmox for management interface and one for uh, the OpenSense uh, public IP address. So we will need two IP addresses. So when you rent a server on Hetzner, uh, you will be getting another IP. And moving on, we are going to be using Proxmox for virtualization software. It's a hypervisor type one. So it's not using excessive RAM and disk compared to <laughs> type two hypervisors where you install on top of an operating system. Moving on, uh, since we want our firewall to get a real IP address, public IP address, we are going to be using VMBR0 virtual switch and connect to the Proxmox network interface card, NIC card. Uh, when we do that, we are going to assign a MAC address given to us by Hetzner. And when this machine boots up, it is going to get a public IP address from Hetzner. And we are going to configure this firewall to have OpenVPN and IDS, DHCP, DNS. So it's going to be our gateway, DNS server, DHCP server, VPN server, and a lot of things. For the second switch, VMBR1 virtual switch, I use the second switch for LAN, pur LAN purposes. So my Ubuntu desktop hosting the landing page and Velociraptor is using uh, VMBR1 connected to VMBR1 and Vazoo is connected to VMBR1 and also Hive is connected to VMBR1 which is connected to Firewall itself as well. And I have another virtual switch VMBR2. I created this for DMZ purposes. So there is only one machine attached to it and this one is Teapot Honeypot. So before renting the server just have a view of what you're building, what kind of things you'll need. Uh, for example, if you're going to need two IPs, then after buying, then you should get another IP for the firewall and also do your research about how you do it. So after your planning is done, either go to server auctions or go to your account and you can uh, order a product if you like, for example, this one dedicated server EX44, that means this is a end user level uh, CPU. So I5 uh, 14th uh, generation, I guess, 13th generation, uh, 14 core. So it has a lot of cores to utilize, 64 gigabytes of RAM, less uh, on the storage, 512 gigabytes. But again, this can handle all the virtual machines that we are going to build, probably. Moving on, after assuming that you ordered the product and then what is the first thing you're going to do after ordering an other IP address, you're going to be installing Proxmox. How you can do that? I explained it by providing links in the GitHub repo. What are you going to do? Steps you're going to take? Creating an account on Hetzner, after, after renting the server, use rescue system, which is like a USB stick. So you'll get SSH access after uh, rebooting the machine. Uh, there is already some images for you to use. And one of them is Proxmox Debian Worm Wormhole Edition. And there is a link from communityhetzner.com, how to do it, how to install it. So it's easy, you can follow it. Moving on, modifying the partitioning is very important. In my example, I didn't touch it, so it was 15 gigabytes for no reason, but 
I was able to extend it by uh, this, uh, this link here. After that, we can access our Proxmox uh, from the public IP port 8006. And when Proxmox starts, it also starts our PC server. And we want to disable it because we don't need this service unless uh, it's, uh, it's a special purpose for Windows file systems. So we don't, since we don't need that, it's wise to disable this service. After that, after installing Proxmox and accessing the web UI, like here, we are going to be, we are going to create networks and how we can do that, basically create a Linux bridge. And I created three Linux bridges. One of them serves as the connection to the network interface card to the OpenSense. And from there, I applied the MAC address I got from a Hetzner so that the OpenSense have the second WAN IP address. And I create another one, VMVR1 for the LAN and another one for the DMZ. So if I, if I create another uh, machine in LAN, I'm going to be adding this network in here, like VMVR1. After that, assuming you have created the networks, the next thing you're going to do is create the firewall and then attach network devices and it needs at least two network devices because one of them will serve as the van and one of them will serve as the LAN address. You can add the extra one and then configure the DMZ for, late, or for later, but for ease of installation, uh, just, just add the network interface zero and one to the machine and when you're installing it, configure uh, the right interface with a wide wide area network and right uh, port with the local area network. The configuration of firewall or Wazoo or Hive or Teapot is not going to be mentioned in this video because there are a lot of videos on YouTube that explains how to those ones. In the GitHub repo, you can also find how to install the Hive, Wazoo, Teapot or Velociraptor. I have provided links to, so that you can follow. They're easy to install. Uh, the hard part is the tuning part uh, because uh, basically a lot of them are just one-liners to install like Wazoo one-liner, Teapot again one-liner and Velociraptor is also one-liner as well. After installing VMs with right network configurations, always check if you have access to WAN or LAN or the firewall, or if you can ping the machines on the other end. And if you don't know, for example, uh, give the right uh, connections to DMZ network, just Google it because there are tons of content on the internet, like their community of OpenSense, there is a community of PFSense, there are similar products because it's a fork from PFSense, as I know, so you can use them and even I, uh, I use the configuring DMZ from PFSense setup. Uh, they shared OpenSense uh, DMZ setup. After installing all the machines and making it functional, there is also some maintenance uh, notes I'm going to give you. Uh, first of all, create a documentation. 100% you will need it. What changes you had and what are the systems, for example, uh, you need to start after you reboot a machine or uh, what, which systems, which services does not start automatically, enable them, for example. These are important because your machine can be reset. And that's it for the video. If you'd like to see more on this Virtual Security Operation Center, just comment. And if you have any questions about this, you can send me a direct message on LinkedIn. Uh, I added my LinkedIn and also GitHub repo uh, of this project. So if there's anything missing, you can uh, ask me. See you guys on the next video.